Hey guys, this is AJ, and I am going to do something new tonight. We're going to take a look at the Cat's Eye XI private server. And I created a character last night. I haven't done anything with it yet. Wanted to record all of my progress and whatnot. So, as you can see, I got zeros and ones everywhere. Apparently, they start you off with some money. A little bit more than the, uh, is it 100 gil that you get for the Adventurer's Coupon, which is nice. And, um... I did very, very little, and when I say very little, I mean maybe three minutes of actually reading up on this server, and, you know, it is, we'll equip our white belt, we decided to start off as a monk because we started off as a warrior last time on the Eden server. Looks like we have a crazy bonus with the Sprout Beret. Combat skill gain 3, magic skill gain 3, experience bonus 150%. And I'm not, I gotta, I gotta figure out my my UI, it looks a little bit fuzzy. Um, but... Um, the reason that I wanted to... Give this a try. Wow, it feels like it definitely feels like the movement speed is uh, is more than average too. That is a definite change. Who was adventurer coupon? Was it Alivia? Let's try trade. Why, hello, I am Olivia. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Learning your way around can be daunting at first, but take your time and you'll be fine. Should you get lost in the map of the main menu? Now, I'm supposed to give you this in exchange for your adventurer's coupon. You will find a guardsman, a guardswoman named uh, Alone? 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 At the west gate, southwest from here, she has further information that should provide useful in your adventuring. Whoa, 50 gil. Um, now, maybe if I can, uh, <laughs> uh, stick to one point and get through it. The, um, I believe this, so the server is a 75 cap, but I believe it has every job in Final Fantasy, um, up to Rune Fencer and Geomancer available. And it has Trust Magic, which you'll see in most of your private server um, your private server magic tab, but it's never activated. Um, full disclosure, again, for people who did not watch my Eden series, which is, I believe, only about seven hours. Seven episodes or seven hours? Probably, I think, seven episodes and seven hours. Uh, a little bit of uh, my backstory with Final Fantasy XI. It was either my first or my second MMO. I, I, I'm getting my timelines mixed up in my head. Um, it was either Final Fantasy XI, 
or City of Heroes, um, both which I love, absolutely loved. Um, but by far, any kind of gaming, any kind of entertainment period, I've probably played more hours of Final Fantasy XI than I have watched like hours of movies in my life. Um, so it's it's, and that's not definitely not saying that I'm. A professional Final Fantasy XI player. I'm definitely not that. Um, but I've always... I've spent many, many hours just, you know, crafting or exploring or mostly camping. Um, shoot the amount of uh, time that I've spent camping like Eastern and Western Shadows or at uh, some H&M camps. It just probably would make people cry the amount of time I've wasted doing that. Um, but I played through... I believe I played through Wings of the Goddess. Um, quit during Wings of the Goddess. And didn't come back to Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy XI Retail until... Um, maybe two years ago in a Welcome Back campaign. And... Um, I maybe played that for like two or three months. So I, I understand trusts, but I wasn't... Oh wow, that's a pretty elaborate outfit. Um, I understand trusts, but I, I, you know, I'm not going to be like 100% sure on where to obtain them and which one is best for what situation. Um, another thing that I read is that the AH is stocked with, I believe, crafting materials. I'm not sure if it's stocked with anything else. Let's take a look at the... We'll just say, take a look at uh, the old standby. See what leaping boots are selling for here. Not available, but about 400, between 350 and 400, that's reasonable. Um, it is a small server, so maybe it's not super reasonable. Let's go see what um, all areas. 190, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if they allow dual boxing. Uh, again, this is probably stuff that I <laughs> should have uh, done some research on before. But I was excited. I had a long day at work and uh, um, spent some time with the, the kiddo after work. And it's now 10 p.m. Oh, I should probably move my taskbar out of here. Um... So it's 10 p.m. on a Wednesday night, and I worked about 12 hours today. Spent some time with the kid. Now, I was just really excited to give this a shot. Um, let's check the, the craft. Materials, let's say goldsmithing. And I believe it was something around the... There was... I think I read it was every base... Um, every base item would be stocked with three every three hours. So if somebody, um, if these were automatically stocked, these, uh, I've never even know what this is, Fry, Phrygian Gold Sheet, Phrygian Gold Sheet. If this was something that was auto-stocked, it's got one left in stock. Um, from my understanding is that that means somebody bought two of them. And... Ooh. They don't tell you what... They don't tell you what they were worth? Huh. Um, 
so somebody bought two of them, and then I guess you know, and after a three-hour period, they get stocked back up to three. I could be wrong. That's what I understood. That's why I think a lot of you see a lot of threes here. Um, I believe this is. So it feels like again the the run speed feels faster. I don't know. I mean, you, you get this this hat right here that I think this almost. I think the XP. I'm not sure if it's this one or a different hat, where you're, where it only goes up to level 30, like the bonus stops at level 30. I'll have to look more into that. But I'm just really excited to get in here and start playing. I, what I, I think my biggest fear about this is that I might enjoy it too much and stay up too late <laughs> on a work night. Um, so I went over the, my, um, retail experience i've i've been a pretty uh active private server player as well not recently um my child is two so i haven't really had too much time to play in the last two years uh, but prior to that i was i started on nasomi maybe in 2015 ish 2016 ish Played there, had a couple of level 75s. I think I was a level 75 warrior um, slash Sam main, and I was working on my second 75, um, a ranger. Uh, heard about Kupo, the Kupo server that was going to start up, and all my friends thought I was crazy. Um, but I didn't like the way Nasomi was looking like it was headed. Because that was right around the time that somebody was duping the uh, BCNMs somehow. And instead of trying to fix it, the the Nasomi decided to uh, put open world, what he called open world notorious monsters in the game. And it... For me, that was just it. Like, if you were a red mage who didn't have refresh or, you know, uh, I forget the other spell um, that drops off the BCN M40, uh, like white white mage or race or something. I, I don't know. It was like you were you were just done. There was there was just no way that you were gonna get those spells because those stupid. Open world notorious mon monsters were just not fun, and you needed a ton of people to to get them. Um, so quit Nasomi to join Kupo, and if you don't know, Kupo is Kupo became Eden eventually. On um, Kupo, I had I think three or four level 75s, and that was when I was definitely playing the most sweaty. I. Uh, uh, at the time, I was bartending full-time, and for me, that was four days a week, about 12 hours a shift. Um, so in my in my downtime, I would basically just play, and I was, you know, doing endgame LS stuff, camping, uh, Fafnir, and all that garbage at a Mantos twice or whatever. So I did a lot of that. We spent a lot of time. A lot of time. I'd like to check my uh, my time played on Kupo and Eden combined. I'm sure it would just be... Probably be a couple of months. And that was probably in a couple of months time span. <laughs> um, and that, that was also a dual boxing server. So I was dual boxing. I believe I had a red mage and a, the one... Job. The one character had a uh, red mage uh, summoner to summoner, not 75, but red mage, yes. Um, and or no, I think red mage was 60 something. Yeah, I think red mage was 60 something. Um, and my other job I had, uh, my other character I had, uh, warrior, dark knight, monk, and paladin was I think 71. Um, so it was a lot of time. Uh, and um, then I tried out 
Wings when Wings first started. And, um, uh, kinda liked Wings. Uh, it wasn't bad. I guess all of the all of the servers that I've played on um, they've all been like the retail like and so this is what I would call you know a fun server and a server that's probably best suited for me right now even though I will be playing Horizon 11 when that comes out but this seems best suited for me because I just don't have the time anymore So you're interested in some entry-level duties to put you well on your way to greatness. Not to worry, I've, I've got just the thing for you. Go talk to the guard, Aravoge, just over yonder, and uh, have him cast a signal on you, then come back to see me. Okay. Um, I mean, run speed, trusts, that way you're not... I, I mean, I think the... One of the uh, kind of the, the problems... And you, you won't see it too much, I don't think, on Horizon, because I think Horizon, the client that's going to be coming out in, the private server that's going to be coming out in December, I think there's just so much hype for it that even if you start, you know, three or four months after it opens, I think you'll, you'll still be, you know, in with the new wave of people. Uh, right now, I feel like if you go to Eden or Wings, you're, you might not have a hard time, like a super hard time finding a party, but um, for somebody like me that... Like, I like to, to record Let's Plays. And for, you know, a Let's Play, I, I, wanna, I want every moment documented. I don't want to tell you between episode one and two that, hey, I went out and I camped that notorious monster and I got my craps up to, you know, 35, every one of them. To me, that's like, eh, you know, like, well, thanks for telling me, but been cool to see that and you know like uh, for a server like this that does have the trusts enabled enabled it's nice because if i want a party and i can't find the party i could just use my trust magic and you have your own party basically all set for you and this one uh the server does also have the and i'm sure i'm missing so much from this, sh this server and i'm sure there's other videos explaining this a lot better than me because i'm just a new player playing this I'm not uh, advertising it. It could be garbage, I don't know. Um, but uh, be nice to, to, to give this a try because, again, I feel like this is more of a fun server. Somebody, you know, like, unwind and I don't think you're going to be showing off your, your gear to anybody and, you know, talking smack on the internet. I am Aravoj, a Temple Knight. I am one of the guards charged with overseeing Sandoria's conquest campaign. Our country has fallen to third in the conquest of Vanadiel. We must step up our efforts to improve the situation. Oh boy. Um, okay. You must fight in battles that gain high levels of experience. It's the only, the only way that we could bring areas under our country's control. Good luck, Vincent. I will bestow upon you your nation's signet. And... So starting off, I'm not sure if that's third place. I'm not sure if six hours. I think, I think that sounds right. I think it's four hours for first place, five for second at rank one. Well, it looks like you got a signet. Easy enough. As long as the signet is in effect, there's always a possibility that you could obtain crystals from an enemy and from any enemies you defeat. Is that true? I thought you only got crystals from enemies that granted experience. Um, or is that wrong? Um, there are also other more concrete benefits, such as increased defense and evasion. Signet even helps you when you're not engaged in combat with an enemy. For example, it boosts the rate of which healing occurs at rest. For all those reasons and more, you should come to consider it essential to have Signet cast on you at all time. Very well, then, as a reward, reward for your successful completion of your first assignment, I would like to present you these strips of meat jerky. Um, oh no. There is more here than meets the eye. That was a joke. 
anyway, this type of item is uh, known uh, amongst adventurers as a meal. This meal in particular, particular will temporarily enhance your attack power when eaten. When, whenever any type of meal is consumed, you will receive such temporary status bonuses. Naturally, different meals grant different types of bonuses. For the most part, meat dishes will affect attack power. Conversely, seafood dishes uh, generally enhance defense, and so, so on and so forth. Take care to select dishes best suited for your purpose. Uh, one thing you should make note of, however, is that you cannot eat a meal while another meal status bonus is still in effect. Your stomach would simply burst. It's quite a lot to cover. Are you sure? Are, are you with me so far? Yep. Great. Uh, well, talking can only prepare you for so much. Let's get right down to it. Go ahead and pop one of those strips of meat jerky. This person wants to watch me eat their meat jerky. It's very strange. After eating a meal, a status icon des designated as food will appear in the upper left portion of your screen. Come back and talk with me again once you've confirmed it's there. There. Put your meat in my mouth. Now what? Uh... Check out the full belly on you. Well done. Signet and and meals can play both both play crucial roles. Uh, whenever you take any t uh, take on any type of enemy, this is a key lesson that you will do well not to forget. Next, let's get those pristine hands of yours nice and dirty. Dirty. No sense in letting that food go to waste. Now, is there? Let's send you out to fight a monster monster on a full stomach. As exiting through the gate over there will lead you into an area with hostile enemies. Try targeting one of the monsters and select Check um, option from your menu. This will help you ascertain, ascertain the enemy's uh, level of difficulty and make sure they're not too strong. Smart adventurer picks her fights. Be warned, engaging in any enemy that checks very tough or above will result in your signet not granting you the defense and events... Event, um, evasion bonuses you would other otherwise receive and that brings us to your next assignment it's time for you you learned how to use a weapon skill wow there's a lot of talk perhaps you've already noticed but sometimes when fighting an enemy your skills will rise little by little when your skill with a weapon you are wielding reaches a predetermined value weapon skills become available for use combo for those adept with hand-to-hand -hand weapons wasp Sting for those who fight with daggers. Fast blade for those who prefer the sword. Shining strike for wielders of the club. Heavy swing for those who take up the staff. And on and on and on. Um, selecting status from the main menu will bring up combat skill option. This will display all the current skills in the value of weapon categories. The first weapon skill for each weapon can be learned at a skill value of five. So make sure your first goal, make that your first goal, and we'll take it from there. <sighs> okay. Your meat buff is already uh, almost uh, worn out from talking so much, lady. There you go, I checked. So, yes, there is a... Oh, oh geez. Uh, there's a lot I have to learn. Um, and number one would be not forgetting to not take on bats when you're level one. Oh, wow, they may. 
So that we um the experience seems a little bit high, and I didn't select that sprout beret. So I wonder if I did, it would just be off the charts here. So, okay, this one, that worm is a pacifist. After fighting what? Four or five? <laughs> Four or five mobs and dinging level three. Um, it feels like Final Fantasy other than all of the um, XP and um, skill ups being crazy high. Oh, somebody went out. Somebody went and learned a new weapon skill, didn't she? Very good. I can see by the twinkle in your eye you've already used it on some poor unfortunate creature, but I'll explain just a bit more. Whenever your TP reaches 1,000 or more, selecting abilities and then weapon skill from the uh, menu will display a list of usable weapon skills. Or you could just use your um, macro. These are deadly techniques capable of rendering massive damage on enemies. It is well worth an adventurer's time to learn and master them. Ah, uh, by the way, you were fortunate enough to receive some items from the monsters you fought. She's gonna steal them, isn't she? If you are lucky enough to come across any beasts and seals, make sure you hang on to them. They may pay dividends later, later on. Now this... All of this is wordy. But this is... And I, I'm assuming this is from uh, future versions of... Or more recent versions of Final Fantasy XI that I didn't... You know, play. Or didn't play that much. And this is great because you didn't know. Nobody knew what to do. I, I remember there was a uh, guy when I played... So I played Final Fantasy XI for the first time on the PS2 with the uh, the HDD thing that you had to screw in the back of it. And this one poor kid, he's like up to like level 55 or something. He's like, I've just been throwing those out. I didn't know what they were for. Um, so Beastman Seals, keep them. It's nice to know that. Also, that reminds me, there's another uh, lesson better learned sooner than later. Items you will no doubt come across known as crystals, such as earth or fire, are extremely significant. They are truly versatile items that can be used for a number of purposes. These include trading them to guards for certain rewards or selling them to earn money, just to name a few. For now, I'd like to explain more about another, another of their uses, namely their role, uh, the role they play in synth synthesis. Uh, first, uh, but first things first, your reward for completing your last assignment. Here you are then, a slice of hair meat, a chunk of rock salt, but last but not least, a fire crystal. Now using the fire crystal, bring up the, synth the synthesis interface. Once there, select the slice of hair meat and chunk of rock salt as ingredients to be added. 
All that remains is to select OK option, and the syn synthesis will commence. You will find the cra uh, crafting process will never begin should the ingredients you selected uh, not form a viable synthesis recipe. Also, even when your materials are correct, there's also always a chance that your synth synthesis will fail, so please be wary. The majority of items which you create via synth... Uh, via synthesis, as well as most of those dropped by enemies you defeat can be placed on the auction house for sale. Oh boy, okay. The auction house is an ultra-consumer venue where you can attempt to purchase the wares of other players by placing bids as well as other, uh, as well as have other players bid on items you have put up, up for sale. My words alone can do no justice to the, to the vast cornucopia of goods um, that is on that is the auction house. One simply must see with their own eyes. Yeah, we already did. That's quite a lot to cover. That's quite a lot to cover. Are you with me so far? Yes. Oh boy. I thought I was supposed to. I thought you wanted me to make her meat. Let's make her meat. Hopefully then she'll leave us alone. No. No. That wasn't very good. I'm not sure if that was supposed to happen on your your trial sin. Stalker. Stalker song to Stalker. In nineteen ninety eight. A DeLorean. Alright. Well, let's just take a look. Okay, so I'm guessing Stalker is the auto stock. So they do. So you were able to locate the auction house. Pretty hard to miss, isn't it? What do you think? It is, I, it is as I said, yes, few organizations in the world exceed the auction house in scale. It will never cease to be of use uh, to you throughout your adventures. It would be wise to become adept at using it. And now, for, and now down to brass tacks. Let's see if we can get you uh, up some levels. There are several items in existence, existence which serve to enhance the number of experience points you receive for further um, wait a minute, number of experience you receive for defeating enemies. Uh, for example, there are chariot, empress, and emperor bands, just to name a few. These are a bit unique and must wait a certain amount of time after equipping them before you use them. Um, I, I'd like a Biako X. Um, there is also a predetermined amount of time, which, uh, which usually which is quite long, that must pass before these items can be used again. The total number of times you may use any single item is also limited, so be mindful of that as well. Many of these items are obtained from the same guards that provide you the signet. All, uh, you only need to exchange conquest points in order to acquire them. 
Um, as a matter of fact, for finishing the last assignment, I'm going to give you this Conquest promotion, uh, promotion voucher. With this, you'll be able to obtain a Chariot Band without having to use your Conquest points. Okay. That brings us to your next assignment. Head over to any guard and have a go at exchanging them for something. After that, can't see, uh, let's see if we can't make it all the way up to level 4. I'll be right here waiting for you to get back. With an experience bonus in place, you should take uh, it should take you practically no time at all. Good luck and be careful, blah blah blah. Getting quite hairy out there. Okay. Ugh. Ooh. I wonder if she'll know if I took this one instead. Aha. Okay, so she just wants me to get to level 4, right? I don't have to actually use this right now. as well, huh? Oh, I don't think that, uh... Six less than ninety one, so we're definitely eighty something. Ooh. Yeah, so I think that in normal I would so that would be four. Yeah, I'd either I'd either have been done or this would have been my last last chance. So we, we kind of cheated. And I'm okay with that. Oh wow. Jeez. Okay. Ooh, is this one of those ones I can only pick one? Let's look at bag space while we're at. Okay, wow. So our bag is 80 slots. That's um, that's something. What does that say? Recycle bin. Okay, that's strange. Mock save. Zero to fifty. Zero to fifty. She's eighty. Eighty. Wardrobe. Wardrobe. All right. So, what this is telling me is that cat's eye. XI really wants you to play a lot of jobs. And I'm okay with that. I am very okay with that. Never fun having to look at your wardrobe space or mog safe and 
decide what you need to throw out because you simply don't have the room for it. <laughs> Alright, so with that in mind, I mean it doesn't even matter since I have so many damn um I wonder if is this one of those things where can they go into a get your mind out of the gutter boys? Okay. Might as well just toss all this in there. I, not that I don't know. I don't think I've ever had eighty slots in my um inventory. Okay, so again, yeah, this is a this is a straight up right now. I I don't know for how long. Um But right now I'm having a I'm having a good time. This is I think it's again like I've said before, I think it's supposed to be a server. Um <clears throat> just to kinda sit and relax and have a good time and right now again forty five minutes in. I've felt like I've gotten nothing done on level four. And I'm still learning. Um but I'm having fun. The only thing I could see kind of like being a little bit of a downer is that you might out-level zones you like too fast. Like, I actually, and this it, this totally changed um, up until recently. I used to love uh, Westron, and over the course of the last, um, you know, two or three characters I've leveled on private servers, Eastron was my favorite starting zone. If you watched uh, any of my... Eden let's let's play. Um which I, I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um it just felt sad. Um I do I would recommend um if you're looking for a straight up, you know era sort of accurate um Oh, okay, so yeah, that's right. The sprout hat won't work if it's in there. I didn't, yeah, I knew there was something. So. Um, an error, era, um, accurate as, as, you know, it can be, you know, not too many, uh, not too many bugs. Um, they catch, you know, a lot of the cheaters, so you don't have to always feel, I mean, like, there's, I'm sure there's a new bot and new, um, cheater every like every minute and uh on Eden uh probably because the population is pretty good I think the last time I logged in last night I think it was 890 people which for a private server I mean but then you also have to kind of take into account the dual boxing not only the dual boxing you have to take into account but uh you're allowed a third character to park in the city to um than what you'd call that brain fart um to vendor not vendor 
um, whatever, to sell your uh, items with your little bag next to your name. Um, so there's, you know, 890 people online, but, you know, maybe 10% of that 8, 890 is, you know, uh, like, have three characters logged on. Which, 10%, that, that's probably a little bit low. Again, I'm not sure about what the rules on um, dual boxing is over here on Cat's Eye XI. Um, uh, Eden's, Eden's a great server. Um, uh, I would recommend that... Well, we'll say that if you're looking for, like, as close to, you know era as possible. Um, i probably pick that over uh, Wings and definitely Nosomi. I think Nosomi is... I mean, I, who even knows if it's still... I mean, it's listed as it's uh, still around, but I think the only people that are still there are the ones that just have too much time invested and can't leave. Um... I've never had a problem leaving. Um, um, so I do recommend it, but it was just uh, depressing for me because I was going to try to, and I'm going to do. It, I'm probably going to do this with Horizon. You know, you, you. I wanted to start a character fresh and not use my the advantages I had from my previous characters. I had millions of gil and you know items that you could trade over to make leveling experience uh, a lot easier but that didn't sound fun to me that you know I wanted to give you a hey if I were to start right now what would I be up against and what you'd be up against on Eden right now is a server that's you know years upon years old like it's got to be what five years old if not you know six um so I mean you you've you've got people that have thousands of hours and you know, tens of, of millions of, of gil. Um, so it's daunting, you know. One of the items that we first looked at over here was the Leaping Boots. And from what I, what I understand, on this server, it should be pretty easy to make gil. Because you're going to be getting sparks, I think. And I vaguely remember sparks from... Uh, retail, like I said, I only played for two months, and I think you're supposed to, like, gain sparks and then buy equipment and just vendor it. And you get, like, a million gil in, you know, like a month or something. But, um... Uh, the Leaping Boots on Eden as of November 1st, 2022, I think we're about 900,000 gil. Um constantly camped it looked like by high levels like I, I I logged on many many different hours of the day and it was always camped and there's just it seemed like there was very little hope like if you wanted if you were a young player and you wanted uh, oh I want I want those leaping boots before I uh, level my uh, my thief or my ranger it's just like no you're gonna have to, you know, have at least two seventy fives, I would assume, to get, or at least one seventy five prior to that to get that much money to, to be able to farm them. And, and you know, I, I could be wrong, but it just doesn't. It it seems like the the economy over there is just it's just it's just too old. That's not it's not welcoming to new players. So I would recommend it. I just don't want to do it. I guess that's what that's what we're, we're going to say. And that's why, you know, you're excited about Horizon. Um, when a server is fresh, it's like, okay, I can only sell my stack of fire crystals for, you know, 175 gil, but, you know, everything's going to be, you know, nothing's going to be super expensive. And then, you know, like it gives you a, a motivation to craft, you know, like get out there and craft. Um, I'm sure that the person, you know, like on Horizon who gets alchemy to 
um, certain level, you're going to be making hand over fist with your with what you can make, you know. Um, same with woodworking and all of that stuff. So it'd be fun to see the new economy. Catch my breath before I talk to this lady because she's going to give me about a textbook size uh, response here. Well, well, well. We might make an adventurer out of you adventurer out of you just yet. Looks like we've almost washed all the green off of you. A bit of bad news though. Starting from level 31, any time you're knocked unconscious, your experience points will suffer a deduction. 31 What? What? 31? Okay. As a general rule, the amount penalized will be about 10% of the total uh, amount required to reach the next level. You have to be more careful than ever from here on out. However, there are ways to minimize loss of experience points. Like this, for example. Go on, take it. Your reward for reaching level 4. It's called a raising earring. Uh, using this will grant you the status known as re-raise. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Uh, whenever you're rendered unconscious while this effect is in place, you'll have the option to revive yourself. Choosing to do so will cause you to be resuscitated in the very spot that you have fallen. In addition, as I stated previously, the amount of experience points you will lose will be somewhat lessened. Raising, earring, raising earrings and similar items work the same uh, manner as the chariot bands and other experience points bonus I mentioned earlier. That is, once equipped, you must wait a certain uh, period of time before they can be used. And, and there are both cooldown timers and limited charges as well. All these items as a whole are collectively referred to as enchanted items. There are a fa vast array of uh, enchanted items with a myriad of other effects uh, that will prove useful in your adventuring adventures. It may be worth the time and effort to better acquaint yourself with them at some point. Uh, and that brings us to your next assignment. Whew. It seems you're starting to get a hang of things. Next, I'd like you to go and fight some enemies in Lathene Plateau. Lathene Plateau is located beyond the southern reaches of West Ron Faur. I don't Ron Far, Ron Far, Ron Faur. I just call it West Ron. Ron Faur. Ron Far. <laughs> okay, clip that. Um, you're sure? to encounter some new monsters there won't uh, that you won't find prowling around the outskirts of the city. It's a bit daunting, so only require you slay one such beast, then head back. Just keep in mind, the farther you stray from the city, the more ferocious monsters tend to be. Don't say I didn't warn you. Make sure you use the check command to determine strength of your enemy. If you find that you're surrounded by enemies too difficult for you, try heading back to a previous area closer to the city, leveling, leveling up a bit more first. Okay, so... So I get 10... So we're just gonna... I guess we'll leave it in here, but... I don't see any... Oh, I thought her name was Blackface. I was... I was gonna be mortified for a second. Nope, Blackface. Cool. Erbioline. Erbioline. Rolandine. I had no idea just how unprepared most adventurers in these parts are. My superior told me to meet an adventurer who set the first objective from the objective list under the record of eminence section of the quest menu, but I feel I will wither, wither and die before that ever happens. What the heck is a quest menu anyway? All right, well, objective list, tutorial, basics, the first step forward. Ah, hello, Roland Bean. Ah, beautiful cutscene. This is Stuffy Doll, isn't it? I remember this. 
didn't understand it. I really didn't understand it. How will I ever be able to show my beautiful yet shame face to my superiors again? Oh my, what a stunning coincidence. I have long given up hope on bumping into someone who satisfied the tall list of requirements. You would not happen to be knowledgeable about the subject of records of eminence, would you? Um, oh, do I have to? I kinda know. Splendid, then you have saved me both, uh, saved both me uh, from losing any more of my time and you from long-winded explanation. Oh, thank God. As you know, you have cleared this first objective with fly, uh, objective with flying colors. Yeah, I have no idea what what this is supposed to be. In honor of your accomplishment, I would like to present you with a uh, memorandal. Yeah. It slinks up from nowhere like an assassin and stares with such creepy intensity that you cannot help but uh, think how adorable it is. Do you think it's listening? Um, each time you clear an objective, the details are recorded within the frame of this eerie doll. On a brighter note, you also receive uh, a quantified measure of your eminence termed sparks. Um, oh, of course. I as well cannot stand how that doll stares daggers into the depths of my soul. At least its inventor was magnanimous enough to bestow it with this special function. Amazing is it not? I hear it is all attributable to an astral patina. Sadly, I do not understand much more about it than that. What I do know is that your recipe for success is to set objectives periodically. That way you can complete them while you're on your adventures and garnering, garner as many sparks as possible. Moreover, some objectives only appear after you complete a certain amount of others. There's always a chance you'll be surprised when you check. In the event you have forgotten how to set objectives in the objective list under records of eminent section of the quest menu. From there, pick, simply pick the ones most suited to your current undertakings. I suggest partaking in a variety of objectives, including the ones that may be repeated. Then, when you accrue a sufficient amount of eminence, come to me or one of my friends, and we have many reward, uh, many a reward stockpiled and ready to enter your veteran hands. In summation, with the benefits more inflated than ever, uh, inflated than even the Royal Guard sense of self-worth, and absolutely no downside, why would you not give this a shot? Oh, and as that memorandal, memorandal has irrevocably bonded to you, there's no need to return it. All we can do is throw it to the Wendingos if you don't keep it. Okay, the auction house is restocked every three hours. Invisible eyes upon you cause the hairs on the back of your neck to rise. The memorandal nods in agreement. But I don't think we see it. That was my thing, that I didn't... Jeez, I'm getting nothing but meat jerky over here. Um, everybody wants to give me their meat. The joys of being a Mithra. Um... No, what I don't understand is that I don't recall ever seeing that. I mean, like, it should, you know, like, maybe it would be slightly amusing if once you completed, you know, like, not every time, but maybe once in every, what, like, five times, you completed a record of eminence um, objective that would pop up and be like... You know, just float around in circles for a second and then go away. I just don't think you ever see it again. But I could be wrong. I don't remember. Alright, I thought there was something else. Um, 
I don't think you could help me with magical maps. I think that's another thing that... Looks like there's uh, quite a few people from the same link shell hanging out, looking at, uh, at a telepoint. Pretty cool. Okay. I thought there was one more person that I was supposed to talk to. That gave me something else, like... I thought they gave me, like, a... I guess I'll have to look it up. I thought they gave me, or is that maybe... Maybe once I complete all of her mission, she gives me something. Alright, so let's go ahead and set some records of eminence. Okay, set. Yeah, set. I think we can handle that. I don't think you could do the um, Explorer Trove Assist Channel anymore. I'm not sure if we do that either. Uh, quests? skills well okay so those uh, okay tutorial so those are all just tutorial garbage huh oh so you actually have to do that huh I didn't know you'd have to do that if you... Quite a bit here. Content. Okay. Um, this is. Okay, um, wow, that's a lot. It feels like a lot. Um, it's only 11, huh? Okay, um, well, we are a little bit over an hour, I think. Maybe a little bit under an hour. What does it say? Does it have my... Yep, yeah, right, right, right about an hour. Um, I am going to stop the video for now. Uh, I will say after an hour, um, we did some talking, so we did some talking about ourselves, uh, about, not so much about the channel, the channel's new, this is a new YouTube channel, I have no subscribers, 
I am not asking you to subscribe because this content is not very good right now. Um, I have no, I had no plan of creating a YouTube channel. Basically, what it was was, I, um, I'll go into this next time. Uh, let me end for now. Uh, if you watched it, thanks. Uh, I, I really uh, enjoyed my first hour, though. Till next time.